Hello everyone, I'm Q. Harrison Terry from Redox, and today I'm very excited to be joined by Marcus Whitney, the CEO of Health Further, the event we're at today. Marcus, it's a pleasure. Thanks, Q. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, how did this all come together? Because this is a big event. Yeah. Well, it comes together because of great people like you, right? People who care about um, making health care better. Uh, and about a bright future of health. What we really are is we're, we're a community of people who are optimistic about the future. There's so many, there's so many bad headlines out there about healthcare right now, um, but we also know that there's an army of people out there that are creating solutions and are innovative and are optimistic about what's gonna happen. And so we just thought it made sense to create a gathering for those people to come together, feed off of each other, network, build business, and you know help advance the industry. Understood, understood. So this is the third year of Health Further? Third year, yeah, third year. Third year. And what do you like most about the conference? Like, what inspired you to, to put it here in Nashville and, yeah. and not somewhere else? Yeah, so, so Nashville, Nashville happens to be where we're headquartered. Um, and I think the thing that's interesting about Nashville is that Nashville is known as Music City, right? I mean, a lot of our tourism is driven around the country music industry, right? So people come here from all over the world to see great musicians. But from an economics perspective, we really are a healthcare city, okay? Um, Nashville controls a large percentage of the for-profit hospitals around the country. Uh, organizations like HCA, CHS, LifePoint, uh, they're all based here, they're all headquartered here. And so there's a very, very strong connection between this city and where the rubber meets the road in terms of actually delivering care to the citizens of this country. And so this is a very unique place to have a conversation about the quality of the care that we're delivering, the cost of the care that we're delivering, uh, and how to improve both those things. Totally, totally, totally. And so, Given your background, VC or entrepreneur turned VC, yeah, sure. turned healthcare. Sure. Yeah. How did that trajectory come together? I, th I mean, I think I think the common thread there is that I, I love to innovate, okay. um, and you know, it started for me as actually a, a programmer. I started as a computer programmer uh, before the entrepreneur bit, okay. um, and I did that for seven years. And uh, where were you at? Uh, so I was I was at a company called Healthstream, uh, okay. and they do uh, uh, technology solutions for. Um, uh, continuing education in the healthcare space, okay. um, used by more than half the hospitals in the country. Right. Uh, and I spent most of my career at an email marketing company called Emma, uh, building out that technology platform, then building out that team. I was the fifth employee there and sort of grew it up to 50 employees and was under the wing of the two founders. And really, that's where I got my love for startup businesses. And I was never able to look back after that. Uh, so left from there and became an entrepreneur. Uh, and I've been I've launched probably I don't know ten different companies uh, in the last ten years, uh, and uh, about three years ago, my partner Vic and I we we had been playing around with an accelerator model uh, since about uh, 2009, uh, and we really felt like we had dialed it in, and we decided we wanted to go in healthcare, both an incredible industry to make an impact, and also you can make a lot of money if you do it well. Um, and so and so you know and also Nashville is just an incredible city for that. So I didn't have a huge healthcare background, but in a lot of ways it was an advantage because healthcare is in this vanguard where it is moving into a more consumer state. And so my background as a marketing technologist and an entrepreneur has been very, very helpful in that. Got it. So the future, yeah. you talk about like, what is health further in your mind and where are we? Are we at the, pres precipice, the precipice of, of like, this is like, this is the one or like, what's next? Well, I, you know, I think, I think uh, we're, we're, we're getting to a point where we are still convening, right? Okay. I mean, I think that's why what we do is so important just getting people in the same room, having conversations. You asked me what I like most about this, it's the conversations, it's meeting people. That's, that's what I love about this event, um, is getting to meet people who every day are dedicating their lives to making healthcare better, right? And finding out that people have two different pieces to the same puzzle, but have never met each other, and then they meet here and they tell each other their story, and now all of a sudden, like, they're making that puzzle work, right? You know what I mean? So that's that's what I'm, I'm excited about, and I know that this has happened. This needs to happen a lot more, okay? Yeah. We've, we've got healthcare innovators all around the country, right. all right? And many of them are replicating the same solution right. because they're not sharing stories, right? Yeah. So we're trying to be a, a story-sharing platform, right? right. Look, the people in Chicago are doing incredible things. The people in Austin are doing incredible things. The people in Denver are doing incredible things. The people in Israel are doing incredible things. Healthcare is a global issue, it's not a municipal issue, it's not a state issue, right? So we can't keep these stories locked up in a particular city or state. We need to break down all those boundaries, come together, share those stories so we can collectively move everything in health forward. That's totally fair. So one thing that I like about Health Further is it's not just these conversations. You got everything from the music concert that we had last night with the, it was a Grammy Award winner. Yeah, Delbert McClinton. Yep, yeah, yep, blues, blues singer, yeah. Like, 
that that's an experience, sure, right? And right, that was right. that was just the the start. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, we've yeah. got uh, a, a, a crawl further, which is a pub Super crawl. Super excited about that. And then yeah. you've got a concert. Like, yeah. How did you go about integrating the music scene and the healthcare scene together? Because that's a unique proposition. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really interesting. We. I just got done telling you that Nashville is healthcare city and music city, yeah. but actually those two industries do not talk, talk to each other. I can, they, I can imagine. They, they don't talk to each other, they don't touch, uh, and they don't really help each other. There is, There are two organizations uh, in Nashville that connect them. One is called Musicians on Call, and they, and they gather musicians to basically go into hospitals and bring music to, to patients at bedside, which is incredibly valuable, right? They spoke here at this conference. No, they, they didn't speak, but they, they will be speaking next year. They, next they, year. they had a conflict. Got it, got it. Uh, but the organization that did speak uh, is Music Health Alliance, uh, incredible patient advocacy organization that advocates on behalf of musicians who people don't think about it, but they're all solo, uh, sole uh, proprietors. They're business people in business for themselves. They play music and they get paid for it. So they don't have a group plan to rely on, right? So navigating the healthcare space is very, very difficult for many musicians. And this organization dedicates themselves 100% to helping musicians navigate the healthcare system and find the healthcare that, that they need. They're relentless in that pursuit and they both understand the healthcare industry, but they also have incredible relationships with the music industry because of the work that they do. So we, we partnered with them and they have helped us program all the music for the event. So they, they brought us Delbert. That's wonderful, that's yeah. wonderful. I guess on the music side, that's interesting, but you also have a ton of startups. So were those all from your VC connections or how did you go about merging the Fortune 100s and the the startup scene all in one place and actually make everyone okay with each other? Yeah, there's no question. That's one of the most valuable things that, that we do yeah. um, is we've got 300 early stage companies here, right? Yeah. Emerging companies that are looking to break into, you know, not just the, the selling to providers or payers, but also we have some direct to consumer companies. We have right. companies that are bringing totally new models of care delivery to the market. Right. And we bring them all here so everybody can learn and meet them. We also have well over 100 VC firms here represented who are looking to meet these companies and have conversations. We've had great conversations over over the last two days with the you know between those two groups but also we connect those startups to the industry ex explicitly so we've got c levels and vps from major uh payers and providers who are here looking to learn more about the innovative solutions that are out there both to inform them about ways that they can solve really big problems that they have but also you know to help them understand how they can think about working with early stage companies. I think for a lot of the, the Fortune 100s, they just don't know how to work with a startup, right? Exactly. I mean, there's compliance, there's a million right. different issues, like, you know, you gotta be in business for this number of years, and so they're trying to figure out how do I actually get to the point where I can work with these companies, and they also help these companies understand what it's gonna take exactly. to be able to work with them. Exactly, because vice versa, the startups don't know how to work with the Fortune exactly. 100s. Or not even work, but communicate. Communicate, yeah. 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 How do I position myself? Exactly, right? How do, right? I, how do I tell you what is valuable about what I'm doing? You right? don't send the person 100 emails. No, Yeah. that doesn't work. That's not hustle. <laughs> That doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. Exactly. So, this was an exciting interview. Where can people find out more about Health Further? And I guess you're already probably talking about Health Further 2018, given we're in 17. You know, it, it, one of the one of the saddest things is that I'm constantly working on the next year. So right now, I can't even enjoy today because I'm working on 2018. Um, but you can find out more about Health Further very simply: healthfurther.com. Uh, we are Health Further on all the social platforms, so on Twitter, Instagram, at Health Further. Very simple. Uh, and please, check us out. Sign up for our email list. Join the community. Make it here next year. If you weren't here this year, you missed an incredible time, an incredible show. You're definitely missing the pub crawl. It's happening later with Q. Um, but we want you to be a part of this. This is an incredible time, and it's an incredible time in the industry. So come join us. Thank you, Marcus. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, man. Yes. All right. All right.